Hey, hi everyone, this is Vivek and in this particular episode of Lead Code Weekly, we're going to talk about this problem maximum and sum of array. And this was a really beautiful problem from the last weekly contest. This was the hardest problem. And there are multiple ways to solve this problem and there is like even a best solution that I guess Lead Code didn't expect as well. So we'll talk about all the solutions that I can think of for this particular problem and how to kind of approach this kind of a problem if you see them in the real time. So in a real contest as such. So we'll talk about all these things. There are multiple different key learnings in this, mostly for each of the steps that each of the techniques that we're going to talk about. So make sure that you comment them down below. If you are aware about the channel, we have this system that we comment the learnings that is there in the comments so that we get a good list and you can even learn from others learning, right? So do comment down below what you learned from this particular problem and let's get into the problem now. So we have this system that we have integer array nums of length n. There is a num slot number given where is one to num slot. There is some slots given to you, right? And you have to place n integers into the slots so that each slot contains at most two numbers. And the and sum of the given, uh, we have to sum up the bitwise and of every number with its respective slot. And we have to sum and sum them up. And that's what we have to maximize. So for an example, the sum of the place, uh, placing, let's say one and three into slot one. So one and slot one, three and slot one. If four and six is placed in two, four and slot two, six and slot two. And you sum all of these bunch of values together. This is what you get. And we have to maximize this. And we have the choice that we can put any number in any slot, provided that every slot can have only two numbers. Okay, so that's a very, Nice setup. We have some bunch of examples, but it's essentially the same thing. You can try different things and just get it. Quick, quick look at the constraints. So we have n equal to the number of length, which is uh, nothing but up to two, up to eighteen. Number of slots is up to nine, and the numbers are up till fifteen, right? So these are the setups that are there. So how do we solve such a kind of a problem? Well, there is so much of choice over here, right? That there is bunch of blocks or I mean to say buckets, each of those slots or buckets have restriction of two. There is this restriction and we have, we have full freedom of to place any particular number in any place. And it will depend upon the positional value or the slot number and the number itself. So that's the general, like, let's say reading part, right? This is the, like the reading that you need to do. Next, we need to have look at some kind of observations that can be used in this problem. Okay. So if I look at this particular problem for the first time, the first thing that uh, clicks in my mind is, uh, well, the constraints are pretty small, right? I mean, it's 18, 15 and all these kind of things. So most probably we can try and do some sort of brute force maybe at the start, right? We'll, brute force should be the natural choice for the first thing. If not, maybe DP and something like that, because if it had, if it had been some kind of greedy, it would have been like a bigger constraint, right? Like maybe sorting and then using it in somehow. So. Uh, there is a lot smaller constraints. So most probably the solution is going to be brute force or DP. These are the general thoughts or maybe some maths. I don't know, but not greedy for sure or binary search for sure. Right? So there is an obvious elimination of techniques over here. Next we have a look at, okay, let's say there is a array, like there is this slots present over here, right? Let's quickly go back to the problem and have a look at the number of slots. Maximum number of slots is nine. Uh, number of elements is up till 18. Good. So at most there are nine positions like this and there are 18 elements. Okay. How do we proceed with this? So if you see this particular setup, a natural way would be to kind of maybe iterate through the arrays, uh, iterate to the slots or iterate to the elements, right? So in these kind of problems, whenever you have too many choices, right? And we are writing some recursive solution, brute force or DP, anything doesn't really matter. There is a first point that you have to start the, so start solving the problem, which is the objects that you iterate on. Okay. Which means when you're starting, let's say there are multiple ways, right? Let's say there is a one, a two, a three, and so on up till a N. And this is one, two, till up till num slot. So there are multiple things on which one you can iterate on. Number one is you can iterate on this slots one by one, like filling out few elements, picking them out and putting them in over here and then moving to the next slot, then putting, taking on two numbers and then putting it over here and then moving to the next slot. So there is something that you have to iterate on either that can be the slots like this, or it might be that, okay, 
there is this element you choose which block it goes into and then you move to the next element you choose which block goes into and then you move to the next element and so on right something like that so there are multiple choices that we have based like which kind of calls for how do you decide which kind of thing to iterate on what to keep in state what to keep in sets and other things right so let's try and explore both the ways so if we try to iterate on every item let's say okay so for this a of i we will have to know which block we can place in like we, it can actually be placed in any any slot right and for every slot there is a restriction that the number of elements needs to be less than equal to two so we have to keep track of which all blocks have reached that threshold so a block can contain zero one or two right these many number of items so when you are deciding for a particular item based on what you did for the previous items you have to understand that this items has some dependency on which blocks is having zero one or two number of items and you need this information because if the, if something is already two you cannot really place this number over there right and if it's one then you can place one more time if it's zero then you can place two more numbers so this is an information that you have to keep for blocks so the way we will do this is dp we will try to write some sort of dp or recurrence right the natural flow for these kind of problems is going to into dp or recurrence i mean even if i writing it's dp it's essentially just writing a recurrence so let's call this recurrence just recurrence the object that you're iterating in like which object or item number okay or let's call this i'm, I'm just going to call this level okay so this is level one, level two, level three, level four, up to level n, right? First object, second object, third object, and so on. And then configuration of blocks. You have to maintain this because without this extra information, you will not be able to decide what goes into which block. I mean, you are currently at a particular level. So you are seeking that, okay, you are at this level. This is the element which block you can place this into and which you cannot cannot be decided un until you have something that gives you the configuration of blocks because of this weird restriction right and this is what we can keep as some sort of configuration and from over here at level for every level you will have choices you will have for every item you have number of slot number of choices right and for each choice you can check let's say the choice is x you can check whether in that configuration block is that 0 1 2 if it's two, then we cannot place it. If it's one, then you can place it and change the configuration. And if it's zero, then change the configuration. So this is how you think about it. And this recurrence is generally returns. What is the best you can do? You can do with rest of the elements. Right? So this is what we are trying to find over here. Now, this configuration of blocks can be maintained in multiple different ways. Uh, one thing that I can think of is maybe like keeping an array of number slot values. Uh, a better way to maybe store it or cache it if you're going in, the, in that direction would be uh, maybe having some sort of 3 to the power n configuration wherein every position has 3 values, right? 0, 1, 2. So whatever is the configuration is a 3 base number, right a three base number and it can at most be three to the power nine right i mean nine position so it can at most be three to the power nine so there are three to the power nine different configurations that can be possible three to the power nine and the levels can be at max um, n which is 18 and for every level you have nine choices so the complexity if you try to do it with some sort of dp wherein you save the configurations is the number of states multiplied by the number of transitions one plus number of transitions so it is going to be like n into p to the power num slot ns i'm just writing ns multiplied by ns something like this so that would be your complexity if you use it use something like this where you iterate over the objects or the items or the array elements and then put them in the buckets that you choose over here right so this is how you think about recursive solutions that what is the object that you iterate on what is the configuration that you maintain and so on right uh, let's then like try to look at in uh, another lens okay so let's quickly go back and let's have the same diagram right bunch of blocks bunch of a1 a2 a3 so on up till an this is num slot up till num slot from one till this right what if we iterate on every elements right every element over here right so 
in this case we can try to write something like recurrence of level where level denotes which block we are currently filling in right so for every block you might have options right that you have zero elements one element two element right and for a particular like let's say you're filling this block right by that time you would have decided what happens to these blocks let's say this is kind of this goes in over here some element goes in over here and so on so you have to maintain some sort of configuration that which all elements have been already taken up so what we can do is we can keep a mask of available elements available elements right this is the recurrence that we can try, try and keep note that in the previous one we had configuration of block which was which block is filled to what level in this case we are trying to keep mask of available elements this is the difference between the two and in case of the previous one if you think about how will the configuration change so whichever block you put in you just change its three base number so i hope you guys know about what three base numbers are so it's like just a positional value three if there are three positions so these are number slots and then this can be zero one and two this can be two as well so this corresponds to two into three to the power two plus one into three to the power one plus two into 3 to the power 0 and whatever number this corresponds to is what we keep over here in this config block right so it's just same as bit masks but wherein each position has three different values it's three base number right though bit masks are but uh, a lot faster because you have bit manipulation operators for three base you will have to manually do those th operations but again it's possible so level comma mask uh, available for the which tells you which elements are available for you right and what we do is we kind of move towards using some of the elements uh, decision wherein over here we are at this particular block this can have 0 1 2 now if you have 0 then you would simply move to the next level you don't really put any element out of here if you have 1 then choose like let's say out of the available elements you have let's say x1 x2 x3 x4 so on the if you fill just one element then you can choose one of the elements and then fill in over here and then move to the next block and then if you uh, fill two elements then you pick two elements and then fill in this block and then move to the next one so these are the options that you have with you and if you try to keep it this way the way the solution would become the number of available elements is going to be 2 to the power n this configuration remains in mask so it is going to be 2 to the power n level is going to be something which is uh, up till number slot so it's going to be up to 9 only like and ns let's call it ns right that's like exa last example and whenever you are at a particular thing you have n elements and you have to choose two elements so it's something like n choose two or order n square n square number of transitions right so in total if we try to write the complexity if we memoize these solutions and then write a dp with this the total complexity would be ns into n square into 2 to the power n right so this is one more possibility that we can kind of explore right this is the, this was the first one o of n into 3 to the power ns into ns right this one if you use a bit mask approach over here it is n square into n like ns into n square into 2 to the power n and now you can see the beauty of like thinking about object iterations that depending upon which object you iterate on the complexities kind of change right and you can see that for a particular problem where ns is small but uh, the n is big you can kind of use this approach for a problem where n is small ns is big you can use this approach right so it's open to kind of usages based on the problem for this problem i will leave is it as an exercise that you can try to think which of these two would be better a quick hint like even 2ns is uh, is going to be less than uh, is going to be greater than uh, n that is something that is given to us there is a relation between the number of slots and n given to us in the problem let's quickly have a look at that just to be sure yeah now 2 into number of slots uh, slots is bigger than n 2 into number of slots is bigger than n so this is something that you can keep in mind and then you can try and compare okay is this complexity a better choice for this problem or is this complexity a better choice of the, for this problem and you can use according to that right so these are two different complexities that you can think of right so this is how you can naturally think about recursive solutions and then try to optimize it based on which object you iterate on what you keep as a configuration how do you solve it and all so this is something that i will leave for you to explore one more variation that you can think about in this problem is it's essentially like matching right that we are trying to match this this with this this with this this with this and so on right something like this is some sort of matching happening over here 
and if we try to see it from the lens of matching it essentially becomes a simpler problem that we have to assign the slots to elements and we have to get the best possible cost i mean uh, cost as in you can think uh, it as the we have to maximize the ands so take it as a negative value and then we have to max minimize the cost and uh, if you have understood what i've just said you might be already guessing up what we are moving towards so let's say there is this slot 1 slot 2 slot 3 so on up till slot uh, n9 right and there are bunch of elements a1 a2 a3 so on up till an right and then if you want each of these slots can at most so if you ma match a1 with 1 you get a1 and 1 negative of this as the cost right if you match this with this you get minus a1 and 2 so on right so all of these things get connected a right? bunch of these things are connected all of these so you kind of fill in these edges over here right and uh, all sorts of edges get added over here right and uh, you just positional value multi and with the value of the array is what you keep as the cost of the matrix now if you think about this particular problem let me just quickly move this up a bit on this side let's let's pull in a source over here and a sink over here right every element can be taken only once every block can match with at most two so you fill in these with two with uh, cost of zero zero and so on fill in these values these all with cost one at most one matching one kind of each element goes into just a one of the blocks so one comma cost zero one comma cost zero so on and uh, these have uh, co like flow cost you we are kind of setting up a flow graph over here so this is the cost and one only one matching can happen across this edge so this is the flow setup that we make and then then you can see that this problem is nothing but actually a mcmf problem that from this source if you push in a let's say to an amount of flow in total that is possible right and at max n can kind of come in over here so if you like take this as the source and you find out the maximum flow that can flow from over here to whatever is the minimum cost max flow right what we try to see over here is then every element over here will be taken because over here 2 into number of slot flows come from comes from over here and it's given that 2 into number of slot is bigger than n so this is the more deciding flow side like if this will be the restricting one so every element will get at least one flow and every element over here will get at most two connections to match it with so it's the exact setup that is being asked over here so if you simply run a mcmf algorithm from this source to sync we will get the final solution in a better complexity right because the flow is very very small like the amount of flow is in the order of n we can actually do this in polynomial time in terms of n and ns which is number of slots right so this is there as mcmf complexity uh, this is the mcmf part in fact even if you don't want to use mcmf there is a better algorithm for this particular problem in fact so which is something called hungarian algorithm which is maximal matching right if you have to find the min cost matching you can actually use something like an hungarian algorithm and wherein what you do is you simply like one you create one one dash two two dash right three three dash right all of these items over here and then you have this a1 a2 a3 so on right and then you have like the same setup where every one and one dash gets just one of the flows i mean you don't really set up the flow matrix you basically build them uh flow network you build a matrix wherein a1 a2 so on up till a n is over here and uh, we're gonna do is we're gonna put in like at any particular place like the cost is going to be a i like if this is a of i and this is some j normal or dash doesn't really depend and j this is the cost if you match it minus of this is the cost and then this is an assignment problem that you have to assign with a minimum cost there is a standard algorithm over here for this which is called hungarian algorithm and you can use that and in total it will be let's say the matrix dimensions would be restricted by like if you if there are more elements over here just add a few zeros at the end right you can put in more zeros at the end to make it of a square dimension and it will be of a dimension of number of slot right and uh, we know that hungarian algorithm can solve this problem in order ns cube so 
and like the matrix, whatever is the number of items that you're matching, its cube is the is the complexity for minimum matching finding algorithm that is Hungarian's algorithm. So you can use that to solve this problem in order ns cube, which is very, very optimal, right? And space would be order n square because you just build a matrix ns square. So that is the most optimal way in which you can solve this particular problem, right? We kind of went through a lot of different approaches. So let's quickly recap them up. I understand that the last two might be a bit more difficult if you don't really know about flows and Hungarians, but still, since they are very interesting and somebody who is already in competitive programming would know about this, let me just, I thought maybe I should cover this up. I guess this is above the level of lead code. So that's not the concern over here. Like if you want, you can code this up and you sh it should get AC, right? So there are these four approaches that we talked about. Number one, Quick pointers for the comments that you're going to write soon. Number one, how do you decide what object iteration you are doing, right? So we try to see that which object we are iterating, how the constraints are set up. And since the constraints are small, we moved into brute force and recursion idea. And then based on this number of slot, this is the some kind of complexity that we build. Some sort of DP is what we are using over here. This is actually a DP, right? This is a DP one solution. The next one also is a DP two solution wherein the object that we're iterating on is different. And based on that, the complexity changes. That's pretty interesting. So every problem can be thought of in multiple different ways, which is the object that you're iterating on is kind of a deciding factor. Then we talked about a MCMF approach for the same MCMF, right? This is how you set up the MCMF for this kind of a thing. I mean, uh, you can also create one, one dash over here and then connect one, one if you want to, but this is the best, I guess that you can create for this. And, uh, there is a standard algorithm, which is Hungarian algorithm, which solves this problem in pretty nice complexity, which is an NS cube. And the, it, this is the most optimal algorithm for this kind of a problem in general sense, right? So, uh, you should use Hungarian if you are going with the most optimal solution. So this is the three, uh, three, four, uh, four ideas. I mean, you can go ahead and try each one of them and it should be a very good, interesting application uh, coding practice. I mean, all of them you will learn, I guess. Uh, if you are someone who is already good in competitive programming, you can try coding the last two ones as well. But the first two is what, what I deliberately wanted to make sure that you practice, right? Quick talk on formulation. We did not really do code formulation right now. So let's quickly talk about that. And then as we wrap up most of the videos, we will be wrapping this up. So how would you write the code? Simply like take the AI, AIs, uh, build the like, if you talk about DPs, right, uh, DP one, so AIs and num slot is given to us. These are the like only inputs that we have. So like we will have to keep some sort of DP of the level that we are at or which block we are filling and some three to the power N kind of a config of blocks. This is what we will keep, right? This is the DP that we will use, which is very, very interesting and uh, essentially we will have to write the DP structural code. I have talked about DP structuring in previous, some of my videos. So make sure that you check them out. I will also add them in the I button. And this was DP one. Similarly for DP two also, you can change and write the DPs uh, for MCMF. Uh, like let's go into directly the Hungarian. So what you can do is you can create a matrix, right? Wherein you put in the values, like you add a few zeros into the AI array at the end to match it to the number of number of slots. And on this side, you put one, one dash two two dash. So this one, one dash represents like one's first number. One dash is the one second number. That is the match max you can do. And since we are putting dummy zeros, if something gets matched with zero, it will get a value zero, which is fine. I mean, it's like dummy matching. So this is what we do in the, as in the matrix. And if this is a one, a two, you put in minus a one and one, and then you find the minimum cost matching of this, which you can do by using Hungarian algorithm. So this is like simply putting, calling the function of Hungarian algorithm. It should be a new snippet. If not build it up, uh, all directly that particular algorithm, and then you will get the minimum cost in which you can match. So that's, I guess the formulation part, nothing much in code once you have understood it, but still there are multiple ways. How do you trade? How do you compare the trade-offs is what you should learn in this kind of problem, right? So I think this went a bit longer than usual ones, but I hope you learned a lot of different approaches. Uh, if you like the particular video, do like and subscribe to the channel because we will be continuing with more such series and don't forget to comment on what you learned from this, right? Whatever you learned according to you is what you write because when you're like after watching the video, when you write what you have learned, you essentially encode your learning into your mind and then it would be very much easier for retrieval. In fact, this encoding retrieval kind of thing is very, very important as well in terms of learning theories. Maybe we'll talk about this in some video, but not today. This is lead code weekly, not uh, like learning weekly <laughs> or learning psychology weekly. Okay, cool. That's all for today.
signing off. Bye-bye. See you in the next episode.